we are going to be talking about our new rib protocols. I know there's been a lot of confusion about how many pictures and when to stand them up and when to lay them down and kind of what's appropriate. First, I want to start by going over a little bit of anatomy, uh, basic bony thorax anatomy, sternal rib anatomy, just so some of the terms <laughs> are a little bit more familiar. So we will start with sternal anatomy. We have manubrium, body, and xiphoid. Uh, some landmarks associated with these, really important one, jugular notch. This sits at the level of about T2-3, uh, posterior vertebral level, um, and that's going to be a, an important landmark for a lot of things. It's also called the sternal notch, um, manubrial notch, jugular notch, any of those terms are kind of valid, accepted terms. Uh, the next one is the sternal angle. This is where the manubrium and the body of the sternum join. Uh, some people you can palpate it and some you can't. That sits at about vertebral level T4-5. Uh, and then the tip of the xiphoid, the very tip is about T9, T10. Uh, that also correlates with the uppermost level of the diaphragm and therefore the upper level of the abdominal cavity. So those are the three main landmarks that we get off of our anterior surface. Uh, on an x-ray, on a lateral sternal picture, we can see these really well. Uh, notch, right here, T2-3. Sternal angle, where they come together, we have 4-5. And then right at the very tip, we have 9-10. Uh, as far as ribs, uh, 12 pairs, we have some differences between the posterior and the anterior aspect of the ribs. So we're going to start posteriorly. Now most of the rib anatomy is seen on the posterior aspect. A lot of anterior ribs is actually cartilage, and so there's not a lot of really bony detail or bony anatomy up front. On the back, uh, we have a few different pieces. Uh, we start out, we call this the vertebral end. Where the rib joins with the vertebral body, we call that the head. And so where the head of the rib articulates with one or potentially two vertebrae, we call that a facet or a demi-facet if it articulates with two vertebral bodies. Uh, so the head, extending off of the head is a little portion that we term the neck. And then right after that is the tubercle. The tubercle is where the rib articulates with the transverse process of the vertebrae. So kind of three little points in there, head, neck, and tubercle. The head and the tubercle are both uh, articulation sites. That is what we're trying to view um, on some of our obliques. So when we shoot obliques at the right angle, we can demonstrate some of these articulations. So those are fairly important on the vertebral aspect. Now you'll notice as the ribs start to come out and around, they extend laterally, but then as they start to curve forward, they also start to curve downward. And so we get a little bit of an inferior angle. There's about a two to three inch difference between your posterior and your anterior end of each rib, um, depending on, on which rib level we're at. So curves around, we call the, the portion where it starts to curve, we call that the angle of the rib. And then it comes around to what we call just the anterior aspect of the rib, um, or the sternal end. So vertebral end is the posterior sternal end is the anterior. Inside each rib we have what we call the costal groove and there's actually a kind of an indent or a groove, a little canal in there and there are three pieces of anatomy that are associated with that groove on each individual rib. We have an artery, a vein, and a nerve. Um, this is the reason that rib, any kind of rib trauma or rib injury can be extremely painful because each rib has a nerve associated with it right inside that groove. This is also why we have to do a PHS with every rib series is because any kind of rib trauma, we have an artery and a vein associated with every individual rib. So a lot of potential for rupturing vessels and creating a pleural effusion. The absolute widest margin of any thorax is typically at about the eighth or ninth rib level.
So you can kind of use that as a guide for when you're collimating. If you can be right around the eighth or ninth rib and collimate into that, accounting for the fact that when they do an inspiration, everything expands, you know, don't get too tight to that rib, but that'll be about the widest level is the angle of the eighth or ninth rib. So you can assume that is the widest point within that, within that cavity. One of the other kind of landmarks that we use is what we call the inferior costal margin. It's the lowest level. Um, it is not at rib 11 or 12. It's actually where kind of 9 and 10 come down here. That's associated with the level of about L2-3. Um, so that's another kind of good landmark for estimating. We all know that if we feel the crest, where's the crest at? Yep, it's about 4 or 5. That's why on a lumbar vertebrae, when we're shooting for L3, we find the crest and we go three fingers above. If the crest is at 4 or 5, you go an inch and a half above that, you're dead center on L3. Well, guess what else we can use? Inferior costal margin sits at about L2-3. So that can be another kind of guideline for, you know, if you maybe can't feel the bottom of their ribs and you're, oh, I don't know how high I should collimate up, find their crest, that's four or five, couple fingers above puts you right at L3. So that should be kind of the lowest margin that you will see. Uh, we've all seen people who have ribs, you know, down pretty much in their pelvis. But for your average patient, that would... That would get you close if you can't palpate, you know, lower rib margin or how to estimate. So that's kind of the general anatomy. You can see that pretty well on some of these, like the sternum here shows you really well some of those landmarks. Um, and then on the lateral here. As far as counting ribs, um, we have the first seven ribs are what we call true ribs. Because as you can see on here, um, they're going to come around and they each have their own costocartilage that attaches directly to the sternum. But then ribs eight through 12 kind of all converge together and share this costocartilage. And so they're called false ribs. So true ribs, one through seven, attach directly to the sternum. All of the rest kind of converge. 11 and 12 are called false ribs, but they are also termed floating ribs. Typically don't have any costocartilage. They're just kind of hung out here. Um, on this x-ray, you can see I, kind of, I labeled them because I know some people have difficulty counting ribs and the clavicle in there kind of confuses. Number one is easy to find because it makes a big C shape. So you have kind of this big loop here. That's always number one. And then you can kind of come down from there. Um, clavicle should sit between three and four. And that's pretty common. That's kind of a good guideline even on like an AP chest to tell if you're lordotic, if you have too much or not enough angle is clavicle typically is going to come in between that third and fourth rib. Um, but anyway, counting down, we can see kind of one through seven, and you can follow. We're counting posteriors here, um, but th this was taken PA. And so we're coming, you can kind of see how the anteriors are quite a bit lower than where the posteriors start off. Um, but then down here into eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12 are little floaters. They just come out here. But this patient also has an extra one, a transitional. So this vertebrae is a transitional vertebrae. It kind of has some characteristics, characteristics <clears throat> excuse me, of the thoracic as well as the lumbar. And so this is actually just a transverse process of L1, but it's really long. It comes out to here. It's almost like another little rib. So be careful when you're counting. Make sure you know, you know, if you clip the top, and you're assuming this is 12, you're going to be a level off. So make sure you have a good reference point from, from where to start your counting. I'm again on here, lower costal margin or inferior costal margins right here, L1, 2, 3. So this is the 2, 3 disc space, correlates with approximately the lowest level of any of the ribs. So a lot of little kind of guidelines in there <clears throat> to know where, where you're centering and where to collimate and kind of how much you need to get on the picture. If you see crest on your rib x-rays, you're probably centered poorly and collimated poorly. So this might help give you a little guideline of where things are located at.